G'day everyone, in this video I'm going to go through and quickly show you how to set up the new Taylor Drift competitor 2.0 script. I'll show you how to set it up so if you want to use all profiles, this script has four of them, you'll be able to do that. If you prefer to run the one profile method, I'll show you how to set that up as well and I'll quickly run through some other things like quick toggles and whatever other mods are there. I'm not going to go into a you know, full depth explanation on every single mod because that'll make the video go for too long. This is going to be a quick setup guide so you can copy this and be ready to use this script in the game. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is enter the menu to do this if you have an Xbox controller. You're going to hold LT and press the menu button. If you have a PlayStation controller, you're going to hold L2 and press the options button. Once you're in that menu, you're going to use up or down on the D-pad to scroll down to the controller config section, which is this one here. Press A or X to enter the controller config section. And the first part you're going to see is this one here, the button layout. Now it starts on default. So if you play on the default button layout in the game, you won't need to change this. If you do play on anything else besides the default layout, you're going to need to press up or down on the D-pad to scroll through the other button layout options until you see the one that you use in the game. After you've selected your button layout, what you're going to do is press right on the D-pad to come across to stick layout and then use up or down on the D-pad to go through this one again and choose whatever stick layout you use in the game. If you use default, you just leave it. Next one is block rumble. So in your in-game settings, so if you go to the COD settings, the in-game vibration, that needs to be turned on. If you don't like your controller vibrating, you come to this part of the script and you turn block rumble on. That'll stop your controller from vibrating. But in the game settings, the vibration setting still needs to be on. Next one is hair triggers. Now, now, all this mod does, if you have that turned on, it means that a 1% press on either the left trigger or the right trigger will register as a 100% press on either of those. So uh, it's good for if you have a regular controller, regular Xbox controller, regular PlayStation controller, even if you have a you know a third party fancy controller that doesn't have the, the mouse click triggers, I'd recommend using this. But if you play on one of the flip controller layouts or you do have a controller that has mouse click triggers, then there's no point using this really. After that, we're back to the start here on the button layout. Now it's important to note that if you do play on any of these flipped controller layouts. You will now enter the menu with L1 and options if you have a PlayStation controller or LB and menu if you have a Xbox controller. So if I leave it on there and back out so that saves, if I now press the standard L2 and menu to try and get in, it's not going to work. Because I've changed it to one of those flipped controller layouts, I'll now press LB and menu to get in and there we go, everything's fine. So yeah, that's only for the people that play on a flipped controller layout. If you don't play on uh, anything that's flipped, you're still going to enter the menu and change values using LT or L2. What I'll do is I'll pop some instructions on the screen for you now just to try and keep this as simple as possible. These first lot of instructions you see here are for any button layout besides flipped. If you do choose one of those flip controller layouts, these will be uh, your instructions here. So take a screenshot of whichever ones you need and keep them safe. Now, after we've finished going through the controller config part, we can press circle or B to back out to this main menu. Press down on the D-pad once and then press A or X to go into the profiles part here. The first one you'll see is the profile button. All you're going to need to do is use up and down on the D-pad to scroll through and choose whatever profile button you want. The most popular one is definitely triangle Y as that's the button you use to change weapons in the game. The profile button is the one you want to press to change profiles on the script. So there's four available on this one. Uh, it'll switch between one, two, one, two, or you can change it and it'll switch between three, four, three, and four. So we'll get into that soon, but the profile button is going to be the button that you press to change profiles. Next is the resync button. So there is only one choice here, but the reason for that is because the resync button is going to be whatever button you choose here and triangle or Y. Okay, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to find uh, LT, L2, uh, this one here, and that means I'll back out so that saves. Now, this means when I press triangle or Y, it's going to change profiles one, two, one, two. But if something gets a little bit mixed up, so say, for example, you've got your assault rifle out and you're on your SMG profile, what's going to happen is when you change weapons in the game, it's going to switch to your SMG in the game, but then be on your assault rifle profile. So things will get a bit mixed up. So to fix that, you're going to press these resync buttons that we just chose. So remember, it's going to be whichever one you chose from that list there, which mine was LT and triangle Y. And there we go. So that's going to change the profiles there on the script, but it won't change your weapons in the the game. So if things get a little bit mixed up, this is what you need to press to get things back in sync. After you've sorted your profile button and your resync button, we move over one more to our profile pairing. So this is going to be the two buttons that you need to press to switch it from being on profile one and two to profile three and four. So as you can see, I've chosen R3, R, S and D-pad down. When you first get here, it's going to look a little something like this. It'll have select and select. So you'll have to go through and choose your own buttons. The way you do this is you hold your ADS button and then you use the D-pad left and right to scroll through and choose whichever button you want. So I'm going to go with where it was before, R3 slash RS, which is 
clicking the right stick in. After you've chosen the first button, you let go of your ADS button, press down on the D-pad so those two dots go to the next one down. We're going to hold the ADS button again and then use left and right on the D-pad to choose our second button. So I'm going with R3, R, S and D-pad down. Once I press B and back out so that saves, B or circle, you can see as usual, I press triangle or Y, it'll change between profile one and two. But if I press R3, R, S and D-pad down, it then changes to profile three. Now, when I press a triangle or Y, it'll change from three and four and back again. Now, if I want to go back to uh, profile one and two, I just press the same R3, R, S and D-pad down and it switches back and you can switch between these two again. Now, after profile pairing, there is one more option here, the two button method. Now, what this does, it allows you to press two buttons just to simply change between profile one and two or profile three and four. I personally don't really see a need for it. If you want to set one up, go for it. You set it up the same way. We just set up the profile pairing buttons, but again, I don't really see a point using it. All it's doing is just changing profile from one to two or from three to four and back again, uh, but you're doing it by pressing two buttons rather than just pressing triangle or Y. So if you want to do that again, just set that up there. Now, setting it up like I showed you is going to give you access to all the profiles. So if you're a player that likes to have a certain profile set up for ground loot and then switch it to the other profiles once you get your loadout, that's going to be how you set it up. But if you like to use the one profile method like I do, what you're going to do is in this profile part here, the profile button, you're going to leave that one blank and the racing button, you're going to leave that one blank as well. Uh, your profile pairing buttons, I'm going to leave mine there. I'd recommend doing the same, just leaving in there just in case and back out. And there you go. So now when you press Y, nothing happens. Um, if you want to change to the other profile, you can press the R3 RSD pad down like I had it set to. But again, as I'm pressing triangle wide, nothing's happening. So it'll just stay on that one profile and you just need to adjust your uh, anti-recoil and your aim assist for that one profile. After you've been through all these, what we're going to do is back out to the main menu again. So with circle or B, press down on the D pad once more and we're going to go to the quick toggles part. So we enter that with A or X. First thing you're going to come to is this one here, the choose QT1. If we use right on the D pad and go over, you can see choose quick toggle two. And then we've got select quick toggle one and select quick toggle two. All right. So those four are all tied together and I'll show you how. So if I go back to choose quick toggle one and I choose the first option, you use up and down on the D-pad to scroll through the available options here. So let's say I just choose auto aim. I go over to choose quick toggle two and let's make that insta drop. Now, when I move over one more time, instead of it saying select quick toggle, it says auto aim quick toggle and the next one says insta drop. If I go back to quick toggle one here and change this to jump shot and change this one to crouch shot. If I move over, we can see this one has now changed to jump shot quick toggle and crouch shot quick toggle on the one after that. All you need to do if you want to use these is scroll through and choose which mod you want to put onto a quick toggle and then move over to the quick toggle part here and choose which buttons you want to press uh, to use as a quick toggle for that selected mod. You choose these two buttons the same way we chose the profile pairing ones before. So you hold your ADS button, which is going to be L2 or left trigger or L1 or LB if you use one of the flip controller layouts. You then use left and right on the D-pad to scroll through the available options. Once you've found your uh, button that you want to use, what you're going to do is let go of your ADS button, press down on the D-pad, hold the ADS button again and left and right on the D-pad to go through and choose the second button. After that, we come to handgun mode. Now, handgun mode, I've been using just like rapid fire. So previously in the other Taylor Drift scripts, if you have used those, you've been able to have rapid fire on a quick toggle. You can't do that in this script, but you can do it with handgun mode like I'm doing here. So all I've done is I've gone into this part here on the quick toggle. I've chosen L2 slash LT and D-pad down to be my quick toggle for handgun mode. Now, if I back out of the quick toggle section and go up to the handgun settings, the first thing you come to is fire only. I keep that off. If you press A or X here, you'll go to the RPS, which is rounds per second. So this is adjusting um, the, the rapid fire speed. So I've got that set to 15. You can have it on 10, 15, somewhere between there. That'll be fine for most weapons. Backing out of there and going back down to the quick toggles part. So into here, going over handgun mode. After that, you've got dual handgun mode. So that's a new one. If you want to have a quick toggle for that, you just select that there. Strafe shot, that's another mod that's available here. If you want to have a quick toggle for that one, again, select it here. And then we're back to the start. Now, after this, let's back out. Most the stuff from here is going to be all personal preference. There's no, you know, perfect settings that I can give and that's going to be absolutely the best for every single person that uses this script and plays Call of Duty that has a Chronos in. That's just not how it works. A lot of this stuff is going to come down to personal preference, but let's go through and show you, you know, what else is available on the script. First thing I'll go through is the MISC mods here. We've got Slide Cancel. If you're playing COD Modern Warfare, you're going to use that one. If you're playing Cold War, you're going to use that one there. If you're playing Vanguard, you can use the Modern Warfare one. Now from here, if you press A or X, you'll go into the Slide Cancel set. Settings. Mine's on 60 at the moment. It starts on a default of 120. So the way you change these values, I do like to lower mine. Again, this is all personal preference. You're going to hold your ADS button and then use the D-pad to adjust this. So up and down on the D-pad will change these values by 10. Left and right on the D-pad will change it by 1.
one. So I'm going to take mine down to 60 as that's where I like to have mine. Again, personal preference, you play around with it and find what's comfortable for you. After slide cancel, we've got the bunny hop mod. So this mod allows you to hold your jump button and the mod then spams the jump button for you. So you don't need to keep pressing it. You simply hold jump. The mod does the rest. We'll just keep spamming the jump button. Next, we'll have a quick look at the fire mods here. In here, you'll find strafe shot and also enemy ping. So they're pretty straightforward. If you want to turn these off or on, you just press up or down on the D-pad. And strafe shot just means that uh, when you start shooting, your operator will move left to right. You can go into the strafe shot settings here. You can see it says strength. All this is going to change is how quickly or how slowly your operator moves left to right when you start shooting. I personally don't use this because I kind of do it myself anyway. I'm just kind of used to it. The next one is enemy ping. So this one will ping the location that you're shooting at. So uh, if you have this one on, you go into the settings here. There is a ping delay. So if you don't want it pinging every second and annoying your teammate, then what you can do is you can boost this one up to maybe every two seconds or every three seconds instead. Again, personal preference, just muck around with it and find what's going to be better for you. Next is the mod activation. So if we go into the mod activation part here, I've done a video on this recently, even though it's for the Scottish tryhard script, it's still the same mod. It's still the mod activation stuff. So it still works the same way. All you're doing is changing when you want the mod to activate. So this is basic anti-recoil. Do you want it to activate when you ADS and shoot? or do you want it to activate uh, when you ADS and shoot and when you shoot from the hip? Do you want it to activate only when you shoot from the hip? That's all you're changing here with mod activation. You know, it does what it says on the tin pretty much. Uh, over here, Taylor AA, this is for the aim assist stuff. Do you want the Taylor aim assist to activate when you aim down your sight and shoot? Or do you want it to activate when you aim down your sight and shoot and also shoot from the hip? You know, so again, mod activation, you're just changing uh, when the mod will activate. Okay, and now I'm going to quickly go through some aim assist and anti-recall stuff. The video is already sitting at about 10 minutes long, so I can't just go through and explain absolutely everything and every little detail with aim assist and anti-recall. I've got plenty of videos that do explain most of the stuff, and I'll link as many as I can in the description of this video as well. Um, but let's have a look. So for aim assist, there's Taylor AA, there's Bats AA, they're the only two that we can choose from here i've got mine on mine's in linear i've been using uh, the asterisk shape that's my shape that was my suggestion it's been going okay now radius 15 speed 15 long range mode i'm not using it this is a new one if you want to uh, set a long range quick toggle what this will do when you activate it it'll change your shape it'll change the radius it'll change the speed of your aim assist to make those long range shots a little bit easier for you so I don't really find uh, you know a need for it, but if you want to use it, go for it and set the quick toggles for it there. Tracking, I've got that on. It's on the default of size two and speed three. Back out also on bats. I've got that turned on. That's on strength of 10 and time of 20. And that's what I use for the aim assist. Now I've also got a bunch of anti-recall options in here. The first one is the basic anti-recall. There's also advanced anti-recall there as well. Now in the basic options, if you press up and down on the D-pad, it'll change between polar rumble and rumble. Now I know someone's gonna ask cause it's fair enough. What's the difference between rumble and polar rumble? And I'll read this message from Taylor Drift explaining it himself. So polar rumble uses polar values, meaning our range for polar is negative 32,776 to 32,776. Non-polar uses a value range of negative 100 to 100. When using polar, we have a more natural feeling from the right or left stick because this is the actual range of our controllers. This applies to aim assist as well, not just anti-recoil. The new aim assist uses real polar values. There is nothing much else to say about it, to be honest. So that's as basic as it gets. And there's also the advanced anti-recoil as well. So if you have a look at the basic ones, you've got a choice of vertical strength and horizontal strength. That's it. If you look at advanced anti-recoil, there's standard, rumble, hybrid, and polar. And if you have a look in here for all of these, there's a vertical start, a vertical mid, a vertical end value. There's also a vertical time. And then for horizontal, you've got horizontal start, horizontal end, and the horizontal time as well. So it's a much more in-depth anti-recoil. And again, I have done a video in the past explaining the advanced anti-recoil or progressive anti-recoil as it used to be called. And there will be a link to that in the description because it takes too long to explain here in this one. And there we go. So that's everything. I wanted to cover for this video. By now, you should have a basic understanding of how to enter the menu, navigate the menu, and change the values. If you're the type of player that likes to use a profile for ground loot and then some for your custom loadout, then you know how to set that up now. And also, if you like the one profile method, I showed how to set that up too. So by now, you should be pretty much good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the comments. Cheers for watching. I'll see you next time.